Hi, everyone. Welcome to my session. My name is David Ebo. I'm a software architect on the ESP.NET team. And uh, obviously, this is the last uh, session slot of the conference, so you know, not too many people here, as expected, and a bunch of you have already gone home. Uh, hopefully, a bunch more will be watching online, millions, perhaps billions. <laughs> so in any case, I'll try to make it interesting for those of you who have stayed till the end of the conference. So what am I going to talk about today? Mostly this talk is about web forms. So first I want to get a quick thing out of the way, which is the whole web form versus MVC thing. Uh, obviously, uh, if you've gone through the conference, you've seen a lot of talks relating to ASP.NET MVC, which we just released. Uh, people ask, you know, web form versus MVC, which one should I use? In fact, there was an entire session devoted to that. And, and really the answer is that it, it caters to slightly different audiences and there is room for both, and, but this particular talk is specifically about the web form side of things. So in a quick show of hand, how many of you are web forms developers? Okay, looks like pretty much all of you. And how many of you have tried playing around with the new MVC stuff? Okay, that's great. So uh, more specifically, this talk uh, is about the data aspect of ASP.NET. And one of the big new things I'm going to talk about is a new data source we're introducing that we're calling the domain data source. And then I will also look how it ties in with dynamic data, which is a feature that we first released uh, with 3.5 SP1. Uh, how many of you have played with dynamic data? A few of you, okay. And finally, I'll take a look at how we can take uh, both dynamic data and this domain data source into an Azure cloud environment and do some pretty interesting things with that. So um, I guess this was the slide where I was supposed to tell MVC versus, but in any case, um, I'll start with a quick history of data sources in ASP.NET. So going back to 1.0, we simply did not have the concept of a data source control. Everything was very much manual. In 2.0, there was a major architectural change, and we introduced this concept of data sources, and we had a bunch of them. Uh, there was SQL data source and a few others, but uh, more interesting to this discussion is object data source, which let you write a class that had essentially CRUD method that you could go against. Now, 3.5 was the big introduction of link, language integrated queries. And along with that, we came up with link data source, which knew how to talk to not really link in general, but more specifically a link to SQL data context. And then 3.5 SP1 was the uh, entry of entity framework, and we wrote another data source, entity data source, which pl basically plays the same part that link data source plays, but for EF instead of link to SQL. So now we have this new domain data source, and it's a slightly different, in a sense, it's kind of a mix between object data source and the other two. It's a data source that knows how to deal with link, but also lets you write your own CRUD method and does not sit directly on top of a link, to, uh, on top of a DAO, basically. And to show a, a very simplified architecture of how things work with when you use link data source or entity data source, you basically have your ASP.NET page and in there you have a link to the source control and it talks directly to link to SQL. And the drawback of that is that it's not that easy to get in between. If you want to change how things are done, you pretty much have to hook into events uh, in the data source and you end up having to write code in the page, whereas that's probably not the best place for it. So now moving to uh, this domain data source, the architecture changes a bit in the sense that we now have this new domain service that sits in the middle between your ASP.NET page and either uh, link to SQL or Entity Framework, or for that matter, any other technology uh, could be used under the cover to, to implement your domain service. So um, interestingly, how many of you may have gone to Nikhil Kotari's talk on Alexandria and how he's doing uh, writing Silverlight applications? Only two or three? So in that talk, he introduced the domain service. This is the exact same beast he was talking about. This is that in his case, he was using it to target 
uh, Silverlight client. In this case, we're using it for ASP.NET. So I'll just move to the first demo, which is not msn.com. So what we have here, uh, we don't yet have official project templates for this domain data source. So this is what doing file new, I mean, new project would look like. Uh, there's a bunch of files there. A number of them relate to dynamic data. But initially, to keep things uh, very clear, uh, I will do a demo that does not involve dynamic data. It is pure, straight web form going against this data source. So I'll start with some fairly mundane tasks of adding database to uh, the project. This is when my hard drive falls asleep. It's happened before. It takes five seconds. It will come back. OK. So I'm using Northwind. I know kernel aim. Um, and now the next step is we need to create a model. And we could use link to SQL or entity framework. I'm going to use entity framework. So I'll pick ADO.NET entity data model. I'll call it. Oops. And I'll have it generate a model based on Northwind. OK, now it's going to ask me to pick which tables I want to include. And I'll pick a small subset, product, uh, where is product, category, and suppliers. And I'll just say finish. And it's going to uh, create that little model view where I'll show the relationship between those tables. And here I'm going to keep everything default. So and this is the basic diagram showing relationship between product category suppliers. I'll just leave it alone. And now, so this is where, so far, everything I've shown so far, there is really nothing new. I just created an EF model. Now, if you were using link data source, you would directly go and author your page and put a link data source in there. Instead, I will be creating this new thing we're calling a domain service. So add new item, now gives me this domain service class, which I'll just call catalog. And that's basically a, going to be a repository for the particular entities we care about. And here it finds that we have an EF model in there. And I'll tell it to uh, generate CRUD methods for those classes. And for products, I'll also have it generate uh, not only read-only, but the full CRUD method couple more things. I'll disable this. That's for the silver light scenario. We don't care. And I'll also check this one to generate another file, which we'll look into later. So now that I did this, uh, it generated the most important file is this catalog.cs, which is a domain service. Uh, let me maximize things a little bit. I just found this great key combination. Alt, Shift, Enter gives more space. So uh, what we have here is a class which extends domain service, although in this case it extends it indirectly via uh, this 